Hello again and welcome to our Advent Novena, uh, Advent Reflection and Meditation. And for our reflection, we are reading from the beautiful book, Advent and Christmas, Words of Wisdom from Henry J. M. Newen. And I pray that his words that are divinely inspired will touch your heart. But for a moment, <clears throat> let us just be still and let us come back to our heart and just sense the peace and the love of the Holy Family of Nazareth, of Joseph and Mary making their way across the treacherous hills of Judea for our freedom. And now we read our reflection for day 10. And its theme is passionate waiting. If it is true that God in Jesus Christ is waiting for our response to divine love, then we can discover a whole new perspective on how to wait in life. We can learn to be obedient people who do not always try to go back to the action, but who recognize the fulfillment of our deepest humanity in passion and in waiting. If you and I can do this, I am convinced that we will come in touch with the glory of God and our own new life in God. So waiting for the Lord, the author guides us to read a section from scripture from the prophet Isaiah chapter 25 verses 6 and 8 to 9. On this mountain of the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast well-aged wines, and then the Lord God will wipe them away. He will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And he shares with us a beautiful prayer. Lord, our saving light, who came to set us free, shine upon us in your glory. May your light provide illumination for us so that we recognize all those who need our help however much, however little. Keep us from straying into the works of darkness. Wipe away our tears and grant us your light and your blessings today. Amen. But the author isn't finished there. He gives us an action for Advent. Obedience to God's plan for us should really be unqualified. For today, give a yes always instead of a yes but to God's requests. The word but inserts a condition into our relationship with God and signifies less than wholehearted acceptance. Now my heart is guided to read that again. 
obedience to God's plan for us should really be unqualified. For today, give a yes, a yes always, instead of a yes but, to God's requests. The word but inserts a condition into our relationship with God, and it signifies less than wholehearted acceptance. So we take those words and we ask the Spirit of God to explain them to us. What does the words patient waiting mean for us? I understand the word patient and I understand the word waiting, but in relation to the spiritual life, it could have many different meanings. It could have conditions like the word but. So now, I'd like you to relax, to be still wherever you are in the world and to be mindful of your feet, your sacred feet. And now place your hands resting on your upper thighs with the palms facing towards God. And now we focus on our in-breath. So we take a nice, deep, non-labored in-breath and hold it and now release to God any tension or fear and leave it with God. And now go with the rhythm of your breathing and relax. And now I'd like you to join me with the Holy Family, Mary the mother-to-be with her beloved Joseph. They have walked all day. For many hours Mary has sat on the donkey. She's weary. She's exhausted and she's heavily pregnant with the Messiah. And Joseph being a loving, caring companion, he found an idyllic spot behind a rock face with several palms overhanging to offer shelter for his beloved bride and the mother of God to be. And you join them. And Joseph comes running up to you. He runs so fast he nearly slips and he throws his arms around you, the beloved child of God. And Mary has a smile on her face with tears running down because you have remembered to join them. For she relies on you, she trusts you, and she knows that your love of God is a special gift from God to you. And as all three of you sit around a little fire You ponder on the words, patiently waiting. Mary asks Joseph, the wise one, the quieter one of the two, what does it mean for you, Joseph? Patiently waiting. And you can see he's in deep thought. And he goes away to pray alone with his God. And that leaves you with Mary. And you say to Mary, Mary, what does these two words mean for you, the mother of God to be? And she too has to reflect in her heart. 
for she's only a young teenage girl. And the words are profound. So she's calling on our Father, Mother God to explain to her soul what do these words mean, patiently waiting. And then you sense that the Spirit of God has come upon you. And you are able to share with Mary what it means for her. And you look at Mary and you say to her, but you, Mary, have patiently waited for this hour for the Spirit of God to come upon you. And yet, this is all new for you, but you've patiently embraced the message of the Archangel Gabriel. And in your response, you share with my heart your deep gratitude to all that God has done and is doing and will do for you. But Mary confides in you, not as the mother of God, but as a young woman. And she says, I don't fully understand what God expects of me for I am not academic. In fact, I can barely read or write. But I sense in my heart that I have to be patient and to wait on God to explain what it means to be carrying the Messiah in my womb and what implications this will mean for me as the mother of God. You look at Mary with such love, at her honesty, her truthfulness, and she's touched your heart. And you commend her for her faith. And it leaves you asking you, your heart, the question, why is God asking me to be patient in my waiting for the coming of God? What is it saying to your heart to be patient in your waiting? You're on a spiritual journey, just like Mary and Joseph. You've been called by God. You've been anointed by God before you were ever conceived in the womb of your mother. And spirit came upon you and breathed the breath of life, God's love, into your soul when you were being conceived. And in the womb of your mom, you had to wait patiently for nine months, if not less or more. And now that we've matured on the path, we have to wait patiently for God's will to be made known to us. And often, as you have found, that God doesn't give us too much information in a rush or in a hurry, we're given snippets, nuggets of information to whet our appetite so that we have this insatiable thirst to want to fall in love with our beloved. And so it is in the coming days as we wait patiently for poor Mary to see an end to the struggle she endured for us, for you and I to be free to choose 
whether we wish the Messiah to be reborn in our heart. And Mary's patience is an inspiration for us. Because as you walk with her across the Judean hills, you can see the implications of this long wait before the delivery of the Messiah child. And I sense in my heart that Spirit is asking of us to be still and to celebrate this wonderful gift that God has given to us, the gift of faith, the gift of trust. The gift of acceptance that you and I, like Mary and Joseph, have been called by God to be partakers of the mystery. And the mystery is the greatest love story that this world has ever seen. It is a mystery of divine love incarnating on earth for our freedom, for us to live as a people set apart and to give glory to God by living a simple life of trust. And when things go wrong, and disappointments come two to the dozen that we know exactly what to do, to name, to bless and release everything to God and to be like Mary, to reflect in our heart and to give thanks for Mary didn't know the outcome of her beloved son's life and death on a cross when she said yes to the angel Gabriel. And her words are our words. And we say them together. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God who is my Saviour. So in waiting patiently, I sense in my heart that we can reflect on the words of the Magnificat. And in our waiting, just praise and bless God for an amazing mother as we find in Mother Mary and in Joseph, who's just returned from praying and his words are always true. And he shares with you and Mother Mary on the meaning of the words patiently waiting. And he comes out with one word Trust, trust. And now you give each other a wonderful hug where Joseph and you go to Mary and you embrace our beloved mother. And you bless each other for another day. And now we rest. We rest in the arms of a loving God who cares for you. And if ever you need proof that God cares for you, look what happened on Christmas morning. But look what happened on Good Friday. 
That is a demonstration of God's love for you. So this Advent is a preparation for his coming into our life, into our soul and into our spirit, so that we are reborn again with a new mindset, not of fear, but of joy, just like Francis and Claire of Assisi. They celebrated their love of God in joy and it was Francis who gave us the crib. And we thank him. And I thank you for being here with me. And I ask Mary and Joseph to speak to your hearts on the true meaning of the words patiently waiting till we meet again same time tomorrow evening i wish you every blessing as you prepare for the rebirthing of christ in your heart namaste shalom inshallah paxet bonum om shanti solo di caritas salam alaikum and may the peace of mary and Joseph, become your peace. God bless you and thank you for being wonderful prayer partners for peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>